Amen. There's a lot of things going on in our world right now that is really requiring some good decision making on our behalf. And there's, you know, there's one thing that if, if parents could give their kids when they're growing up, I think one of the best things that parents can give their kids and teach their children would be wisdom. We really need wisdom. Now, Mike, okay, you're doing it back there. Wisdom would be the ability to make the right choices in life to make decisions that are based in future thinking and not present gratification. So often we're, we're wanting it now. It doesn't matter what it might do to my future. I just see it and it looks good and I want it right now. But we need to be teaching them that it's not, it's not um, about the right now. It's what my decisions are going to do for my future. Is it going to derail my future? It's the ability to teach them right from wrong, righteousness from evil, integrity from immorality. Those are things that we really need our children to know. In our day, the things that are going on in the world with the, the pandemic and um, the immoral standards that are being adopted, the works, everything that's going on. We really need to have wisdom to be able to sort out what God is saying to the church. Would you agree with that? We don't have time anymore to be lazy about our faith. An amen would be good there. We don't have time to turn a blind eye to the things that we see and the times that we're living in. And we don't have time to say that we still have a lot of years before anything really bad happens. We're running out of time. And as I was reading the scriptures this week, my heart was stirred when I was reading Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 21 to 28. It says, a message of the Lord came to Ezekiel, son of man, you've heard that proverb they quote in Israel, time passes and prophecies come to nothing. Well, tell the people, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will put an end to that proverb and you will soon stop quoting it. Give them a new proverb to replace that one. He says, now there will be no more false visions and flattering predictions in Israel. For I am the Lord. If I say it will happen, it will happen. There will be no more delays. And then this message came. Son of man, the people of Israel are saying he's talking about a distant future. These visions won't come for a long time. But the Lord says, tell them, no more delay. And my heart was stirred as I read that. Because I think the Spirit of God wants the church to know that there's no more delay. We don't know the time frame. We don't, you know, put years or months or days on anything. Scripture tells us not to do that. We don't know. But we do know that the season is changing. We do know that the end is coming close. And I think that there are many who would witness in their spirit that it's coming very close, probably closer than we all think. And we, we kind of have the, the thought that if judgment is delayed, then it's probably not going to happen, but that's not so. Delayed judgment is not overlooked judgment. And my heart was just stirred that we really need to be aware of the time that we're living in and understand that it's short. The world is gaining momentum in their fight against the church. Or should I say, the enemy is gaining some momentum in his fight against the church. But scripture says that we don't fight against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities and powers and rulers of this dark world. Those principalities and powers and rulers are demonic forces employed by the God of this world. But scripture also says, and this is where our hope is, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Another good place to say amen. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Christ is coming back for his church. And the church will not cease to exist until Christ takes it. We might not be in buildings such as this at some point, but the church will not cease to exist until Christ comes. But we know that the enemy is really starting to push at the doors. And he's right there trying to push his way in through the different things that we see going on and decisions being made in society. And it's time now for the church to push back. It's time to rise up and be counted for the kingdom. It's time to rise up and be counted for the kingdom and push back. But we need wisdom and knowledge and understanding to do that. We need the, the wisdom that the Spirit of God has for us because we need to know what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. We need to know what the Spirit of God is saying to Higher Heights Christian Fellowship. And that means we need to be listening. We need to know how to go about this fight in our part of the kingdom. We need wisdom, we need knowledge and understanding. When we have the wisdom of God, we have the embodiment of things such as knowledge and understanding and revelation. Those things are all part and parcel of wisdom. And these are things that we need to be searching for, not just me, and not just the leadership of your church, but all of us needs to be looking for wisdom. Scripture says a lot about wisdom. It talks about what it is and how to get it. It tells us how to identify people who possess it. And it teaches us who wisdom really is and the foundation for accessing it. The Bible tells us also that those who do not possess Wisdom are considered to be what? Fools. And so it behooves us to gain wisdom, not only for ourselves, but to pass it on to our children and our grandchildren. There's nothing like having a grandchild come and ask you for wisdom on something. Nana, Papa, Grandma, Grandpa, what do you think about this? What do you think about my boyfriend or my girlfriend or doing this decision, this career? So you've gained the resources through your life by your experience or maybe something that you went through that helped your faith to, to grow and get strong. And then you're able to pass that wisdom on to them. But how much greater would it be to be able to pass on godly wisdom to a grandchild who asks? Our grandchild, our granddaughter right now is only six, but... I'm really hoping that one day she's going to come to Nana and Papa and ask for some godly advice because she's seen an example in us. So I want to begin exploring wisdom with you this morning. When I first looked at this, I, I was trying to see what I could squeeze into 20 or 30 minutes to talk about wisdom, and I couldn't do it. So today and next week, I'll focus on wisdom. Um, even that's not going to exhaust the, the subject, but as we embark on a new ministry season, I really think that we need to be looking for wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding, all of those things. I feel that there's a lack of wisdom and understanding in our world today. There's a lot of bad decisions that are being made, both by those in the church and outside the church. And there's a lack of foresight and in many churches, we're being led into seeking the world and society and human wisdom rather than going to the scriptures or the wisdom that comes from God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, Paul is talking about um, the gospel and how he proclaimed the gospel to the church. 
And he said, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We don't want to rest on human wisdom. God's given human wisdom to us, but we don't rest our faith and our life on it. Human wisdom is a gift from God. It's the human quality which enables the planning and successful achievement of a desired goal. So that, that comes through in, in technical skills or pr practical instruction, intelligence and political affairs, you know, different things, your career, all of those things. We have wisdom. I was reading just last night in Exodus where they were talking, God was telling Moses, you know, how to build the temple and, and, the, the tabernacle and the garments and everything. And God said to him, I'm giving all of these people, go and get all the skilled craftsmen because I'm going to give them the wisdom that they need in order to build what I'm asking you to build. And so God gives us human wisdom to be able to make decisions in life. Wisdom as a human skill in scripture, it talks about uh, for that work on the tabernacle, for making the priestly robes, the craftsmanship, the design, and the metalwork, and stone, embroidery, weaving. For work on the temple, they needed skilled people who could work in, in, in metals such as bronze. Professional mourners, they had professional mourners back then. And that was a skill that somebody had to develop. And seamanship, there's skill behind those things. And so God gives human wisdom for being able to just live life. Scripture addresses wisdom for instruction in practical living, for political ability to make good judgments, to bring political success, to give political advice, and to be able to govern well. But we're not to rely on human wisdom for making decisions which need God's input. There are some things that human wisdom just isn't able to help us decide. Human wisdom can't always give the answers to where we should be going or a right decision to make, a godly decision. So Paul said, don't rest your faith on human wisdom, but on God's power. Human wisdom can't give us the answers of a faith nature. And so what is wisdom that God requires us to gain? Well, the best known book to retrieve wisdom is, of course, Proverbs, written by King Solomon. The Proverbs is almost a book of parables um, that if you can figure out the riddles to, then you can access the treasures of hidden wisdom. So we're going to begin there with Proverbs chapter 1. And it says, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right and just and fair. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple knowledge and discernment to the young. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. So with all of these results of gaining wisdom, who wouldn't want wisdom? From this passage, wisdom is the culmination of the result of having all these other traits. It's kind of like a stew. When you make a stew, you have the beef and the celery and the carrots and the potatoes and the onions and the gravy and all these other things that you put into it. And together they make a stew. But if you have just beef, you might have roast beef, a roast beef dinner, all these things separate on your plate. Doesn't look the same, does it? But when you have wisdom, you have all the carrots and the potatoes and the onions that you need. 
So wisdom, therefore, is understanding, it's discipline, it's righteous, it's justice, it's insight, it's knowledge, discernment, and guidance. And scripture says there's no limit to how much you can get. Let the wise become even wiser, it said. James 1.5 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. The, the NIV says you should ask God who gives generously. We serve a generous God. The, the, there's sometimes a mindset that God is nothing but a taker. But we have a generous God who loves to give. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, empowers us with wisdom. The Holy Spirit is characterized and identified through Scripture in a lot of different ways. He's powerful, all-knowing, eternal, holy. He gives life. He's part of the Godhead. He gives joy. He's peace. He's counselor. He's teacher. He's life giver. We hear of the spirit of prophecy, the anointing in the Holy Spirit. And he's identified with things like a dove or rain or wind or fire. But the Holy Spirit is also identified as wisdom. Listen to Paul in Ephesians 1, 17. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit, capital S, of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The spirit of wisdom will give us all things that we need to know. God desires for his church to display wisdom. The wisdom of God is displayed through his plan of salvation, and we are engrafted in that plan of salvation. And when we are, we can walk in revelation and understanding and knowledge and enlightenment and discipline and success and guidance and all the wisdom that God provides for us. Isn't that good? We don't have to be in in mental anxiety and desert, I guess, because we can know what God is saying. We just have to search for it. Paul, in addressing the gospel message and how God set the whole agenda for it, in the beginning said this in Ephesians 3.10, God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. The church ought to have wisdom for the world, not the other way around. When people are facing difficult decisions or financial ruin or family tragedy or sickness or bondage to sin, hardships in in the workplace, the church should have the answers. Yes? The church should have the answers, not because we know everything, but we know the one who does. As things with COVID progress to whatever degree it goes, the world should still see the church standing strong. And too many times they see the church running in fear and confusion. And those things are not godly traits, are they? He says, I'm not the God of confusion. And I'm not the one who gives you fear. Fear is because you lack knowing the true love of God. You're worried about the discipline. You're worried about being chastised. But perfect love casts out fear. This is a, is, is the topic of wisdom is building on our pursuit of revelation this year. Revelation goes hand in hand with wisdom. King Solomon could have asked for anything he wanted, but the one thing that he asked God for was wisdom. And that pleased God. 1 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Often when I'm praying, I'll say, I need the mind of Christ in this. I need to know what you're thinking. 
And when we ask him, he will show us what he's thinking. We have the mind of Christ. So the wisdom of God is something for us to pursue. It's something for us to treasure. And if you're facing a decision today, we can ask God for wisdom for that decision. So I just want to close today by all of us just praying for wisdom, because we need to know what God is saying to higher heights in this season. We want to know direction-wise. We want to know what he's thinking. What's on your heart, Jesus? What's on your heart for this community? You know, we can go running after all the things that we think are good, but if we don't have his heart, if we don't know what's on his mind, then often we can be chasing after things in vain. And part of wisdom is being able to funnel things like our resources to the things that God wants rather than just where we think it ought to go. And so we need wisdom. So let's just stand together and we're going to pray for just wisdom for ourselves and for higher heights and and ask him what the Spirit of God is saying for our church in this season. As we go into September, new things are starting. And so we want to know the mind of Christ in this. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you so much that your word says that if we lack wisdom, we can ask, and you will give it generously. And we thank you that we can know what it is that is on your mind and on your heart. We thank you, Jesus, that you you, you have not given us any uh, spirit of fear, but you give us your love, which casts out all fear. We don't need to be afraid. And so, Father, I pray that as we make decisions, even personally, God, in these days, that you would give us your wisdom. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would teach us all things. Teach us what it is that we need to know in this day. Teach us how to stand. Teach us the things that we need to be doing or the places we need to be going. Teach us, God. We need your wisdom. We need to know what is on your mind. And God, for Higher Heights Christian Fellowship, God, we just commit this church into your hands in this season. Father, as we go into an, a new season of, of programs and ministries, Father, and as things are increasingly getting more difficult in our world, Father, we ask for the wisdom of God. We ask, God, for the mind of Christ. We ask for the heart of Jesus, that you would show us the things that are on your heart, Jesus, for this community. But I pray, God, that you would teach us and lead us to those places, to those people, and to do those activities that are going to produce the greatest harvest, God, and that we can invest in the things that are going to be the wisest decision, Father. Oh God, I just pray that you would lead us and guide us in every way. Father, I pray for every parent in this place, that, Father, you would give them wisdom to be able to teach their children well, to teach them the wisdom of God, to be able to teach them right from wrong, righteousness from evil, and immorality from righteousness. God, I pray that you would give them the wisdom that they need, Father, to pass on to their children and their grandchildren. I pray for every grandparent, Father, that they would have the opportunity and the privilege of saying, Nana, Papa, Grandma, Grandma, Grandpa, what do I do in this situation? And they will ask that because they see the wisdom of God in our lives. And so, Father, we just ask that you would be very present in our lives, in our ministry, in, in every way, God, as we proceed with life and doing the things that are on your heart to do. And so, God, we just give you praise. I pray for divine appointments this week, Father, as we go from this place. That, Lord, you have put places and people in front of us, God, that desperately need to know about you and your love. And so, God, we pray that you would open up doors of divine opportunity. And we ask, God, that in the days coming, that we would see signs, wonders, and miracles in our midst, and that people would know that God is in this house. And so, Father, we just commit everything into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week.